Hey everybody, this is John and welcome to the free video and crazy volatile week last week. Um, I've got a couple things here that I want to cover in the free video and then a ton of stuff to cover in the premium video, but let's dive into this first. So one of the things is that when you get a market like this and it gets super volatile, you want to try to kind of find the trades that are, uh, for lack of a better term, no-brainers, meaning that they are on a clear path. It's not quite, they're not quite so dependent on the overall market, but you want something that'll benefit in case the market rolls over and dies. Okay, so we want to look at something where in case the market rolls over and dies, it'll do fine. But if the market starts to rally really strong, it may not really have a reaction. Okay, so this is an example of this. So MCO, Moody's Corp, you got a squeeze setting up here. We've had a rally back to resistance. And to this to me is kind of a really good example of like, okay, we can go in here and sell one standard deviation call credit spread. One, if the market continues to rally, we've still got a really strong mathematical possibility of making money, right? And then secondly, if the squeeze does end up triggering to the downside, we've got some nice potential to the downside. And then third, of course, if the market rolls over and dies, then we're on the right side of the market. So on something like this, I like the idea of first starting with a call credit spread and then maybe nibbling on buying a couple of puts. And that's going to be my theme for most of this week. Um, in the premium video, I'm going to talk about on the upside in terms of the stock indexes, where I'm looking for them to go this week. But it's these are the kind of plays to me that are the safest ones. Um, another one to keep an eye on here in terms of a currency is the dollar index. So you can see here the dollar index, essentially the stock market rally has coincided with a quiet dollar index. You know, we peaked here and just kind of started kind of getting a little quiet here and actually dropped on Thursday and Friday. Well, guess what? That coincided with a stock market that was also rebounding. So there is a little bit of correlation here where right now everybody's a little nervous around the world. And when money, if they're getting really nervous, they're pouring money into the US dollar. And if they're pouring money into the US dollar, it is coming out of stocks around the world. So as long as this week, as the US dollar is trading kind of sideways to even down, stocks will be okay. But if you see that the you know money really starts flowing into that U.S. dollar again, look for a little bit more of that kind of panic that we saw a little bit last week. And in terms of um, other markets here that I was looking at, um, or another stock here, so the transportation stocks, so UPS, okay, U UPS is part of the transportation index, and there's a lot of stocks with this kind of pattern here where they had some ugly ugly moves and they've been trading sideways and with the markets kind of falling apart uh, of course uh, it was falling apart with the markets as the markets were falling down and then you can see we had a kind of a, a decent little rebound with the markets here right well we've got a pretty good and the thing i found on this this is that these markets really tend to follow the kind of the boxes that they're in like um the channels so here's the channel here if you can kind of picture it that way. So on something like this, where we've got the same thing that we just talked about with Moody's, we got the, the possibility that, okay, we could get a little bit more of a retracement rally, but the market's volatile. I wanna sell, in this case, call credit spreads above these levels. Okay, so one standard deviation, et cetera, et cetera. And then, especially when we get up to these levels, that's a nice, low risk area where we can buy puts because what happens here, and you can even buy slightly out of the money puts here because all you're looking for is if it closes above this, you cut it loose. And so it gives you a fairly tight stop, okay? Okay, and last but not least, we are going to be having a free webinar on Wednesday with Bruce. And he's just gonna answer the question, why trade options for income? And this is something that's come up especially with all of the volatility that we've had coming up. And the question is always like, do you focus more on directional trading? Which usually is more associated with wealth building. Okay, it's like, hey, I've got this account. I wanna try to grow it as fast as possible. And to do that, I wanna focus on directional trading. And a lot of times income trading is almost viewed as, oh, well, I'm not, I really don't wanna make a lot of money. I just wanna to try to make, you know, maybe five or 10% a year or something like that. So I'm gonna do income trading, which really isn't correct. I mean, there's actually income trading is a very viable way to steadily grow an account. So he is going to do a webinar on why trade options for income. So you can go to this link at simpleroptions.com 
forward slash income webinar. And of course, you guys know the drill. You can just do first name and email address here. And he's going to be talking about just the advantages to trading options for income versus for growth. Okay, and then this way you can find, I always say it's like you always want to find the strategy that fits your personality best, right? And so this way you'll know that if trading options for income is right for you. The idea of option stacking for structuring trades in a way that gives you the best possible odds of success. Uh, should you be generating income from options trading so you have extra income to use for monthly expenses? Even if you are doing directional trades, what's nice is that you can actually do the income and uh, plan it out and position size it in such a way so you can at least get your expenses covered. And just all the different pros and cons of doing this. Okay, so again, this is a free webinar. It'll be Wednesday, October 22nd at 8 o'clock East Coast time, which is 7 o'clock Central. Um, first name, email, register now, and we will see you then.